tons per flight. This is a very atmospheric design. Yeah. <laughs> How many tanker trucks? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. It's not something. But we're getting one a day. One a day? Right now, the last two Sundays, it hasn't been like that. Yeah, they slowed down. Yeah. yeah, I think since Sunday we've gotten one. I don't know. I didn't talk to him about that. But it is brought by truck. I do know that they have had to order so much they had to get a 40-yard dumpster for the bags it comes in. Because I had to give them permission to tell them where to put that. A 40-yard dumpster is a big dumpster. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's how it works. If I talk, I'm going to put it on the full screen. No, we see you no. and we see okay. Phil and we see us. Can you, can you talk? There's like a little bar around you that shows who's speaking. Yeah, so we can see. I think you can sit over there. Yeah, it's probably best to mute when you're not speaking, Fred, just so that it doesn't, it doesn't cause the camera to flip your screen like that. OK. That's what I'm, I'm staying on mute till, till I'm spoken to. Are you only seeing mm -hmm. one picture, Fred? What's that? Are you only seeing... to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Chairman Stafora. Here, here. Commissioner Meyer. Here, sir. Commissioner Wells. Here. Commissioner Sterrett. Here. I will mark... Commissioner Sonseri absent. Item number four, verification of agenda posting. The agenda for the Airport Advisory Commission of the City Hall Eastern meeting of August 26, 2020 was posted on the bulletin board at City Hall on August 14th at 10 a.m. per Government Code section 54954.2. Motion to approve the minutes of the Advisory Commission meeting of June 24th. All in favor? Well, I'll put a motion oh. to approve the meeting minutes. Okay. Second. Now all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four oh. <laughs> Item number six, public input. Uh, we have one card, Ruth Erickson. <laughs> Who's watching the news? Oh, there you go. Oh. Um, I pray, pay attention. Ruth Erickson, I unfortunately, well, fortunately, uh, some of my comments are already on the agenda, but I didn't know if you had seen, there is a four page article on the airport in the new San Benito magazine. Unfortunately, many of the items in there 
the restaurants and things, a lot of places have closed. So when they put this together, they were all open. And if you look on page six, you will also see that they mentioned the fireworks show on July 4th, which obviously didn't happen, but I'm also in the picture. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> item number seven, reports. No, uh, item A, runway 21 taxiway safety project. Good evening. Um, I have good news to report. Um, it took us uh, th four test sections before they finally passed, but they finally were able to pass their test section. So last night was our first night of paving. Um, we shut down the airport about 8.30, um, and I believe the first asphalt hit the ground at about 11 o'clock last night. Um, they paved till about 7 a.m. Um, and uh, we're due back out there shortly to do it all again tonight. Um, it was supposed to happen last week, but due to the severe smoke, it was canceled by the contractor's health and safety department. And I didn't complain because I couldn't be out there in that smoke either. Um, and I do see today that a whole bunch of smoke came in. So I don't know if, um, I haven't gotten any word yet that paving is going to be delayed, but it could. Um, I'm not really pushing it. I think safety of the workforce is much more important than getting a new piece of asphalt that we've waited for 25 years to have. So I think we can wait another couple days without it really killing us either way. Um, so the project is moving along slowly, but due to COVID-19 and, and the smoke, they did have a issue with COVID-19 among their workforce too that also delayed things. So um, it will get done. You have my word that it will get done, and when it's done, it'll be great. Um, it just has taken a little longer than it was supposed to, and our decision was to work with the contractor rather than to sit there and growl at them and say, you gotta go faster, when quite literally there was nothing they could do, so. Uh, just my own curiosity, when they fail a test, are they pulling out, recompacting back in, or what do they have to do to make that work? So, um, it is at our discretion on whether the asphalt shall remain or it shall be removed. This wouldn't actually subgrade? Uh, this was not subgrade. Okay. All okay. their subgrade has passed. Okay. Uh, this was actual asphalt okay. work. Okay. Um, we actually decided to allow them to keep it there because it failed for the runway standard. But this is such a thick section. There's actually supposed to be a pass of normal Caltrans asphalt, the first pass, um, as a base course. And it, the, all the test sections did pass for the test course st uh, standards. Mm -hmm. Because the runway oil is a higher quality oil and it's a better product, we chose to allow that to remain and not take it out and have them put the Caltrans mix in. Um, so we were able to get the higher quality product and only pay the Caltrans price, which was lower. Yeah. Um, so by working with them, you know, it didn't cost them as much money and it saved us some money. Okay. As a result of those savings, it looks like we're going to be able to have enough money to pave a strip from the back gate out to, uh, to men's hangar and take care of a lot of those bad spots um, in the asphalt over there. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And plus our run up area. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, was that the same issue that Chapin had, or were they in subgrade problems? But Chapin's issue was in the runway paving itself. Okay. Um, and it was uh, Chapin's issues were thickness and compaction. Um, their failures were compaction and mix. So, on a couple of the mixes, it, they didn't quite have enough sand to rock to oil ratio. Yeah. Well, I know they did Fairview Road, and they had a problem there too. So, okay, thank you. So, if on the, I have a question. Uh, the the section that is going to be over, this is the uh, 
the, the extra you were mentioning goes by where the fire trucks cause the damage on the other side of the field, correct? Correct. Is there a cost recovery if we're using some of the dollars that we're using for this project on the that, or you know, are we going to be able to charge that bill back uh, to the fire department uh, for, I have, for other projects, or how does that work? I have worked really hard to uh, make that a reality, but I was told by the city manager there is no money. Yeah. And I and I looked at the asphalt there. I mean, it's thin. Oh, you know, it was it, a it, very it didn't have, bad didn't have a design. Chance. Didn't have a chance. Horrible design. Yeah, so it was not, I don't see it being the fire department's issue, and the fact that they were there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, they were a contributing factor just because of the amount of traffic and the weight, but yeah. the, the true failure was when it was initially built there was no base, no subgrade work at all yeah. done on that. Yep. And there was an initial layer of two inches of asphalt. And then at some point before I arrived, they put another two inches of asphalt on top of it and they did not use any tack oil. So it didn't even become a homogenous mixture yeah. of, of two layers. There's quite literally two separate layers of two inch asphalt moving in different directions as the ground swells and it, it, yeah, it, you're right. Never had a chance. No. All right. We ready to move to item B, the budget? So our uh, budget was passed by the city council um, late June uh, with no changes. Then it was presented um, to you. So uh, we're good to go. Item C, open house. So we still have not held any open houses since we terminated them post February due to COVID. We are continuing to operate a, an aircraft, historic aircraft display day in place of that, but there is no public uh, notification and we're not inviting the public to come out uh, for the open house until uh, we get a notification from from the airport or in the city that uh, COVID measures are such that we can have a public event again. So uh, I guess we'll table this uh, until that, that restarts again. I do know that the state's issuing new guidance this week, um, but I haven't seen it yet and I'll need time to digest it. So maybe by the next meeting, I'll be able to give you a few more answers on where we are with COVID. That would be great. Great. Item D is in David, vacant commissioner spots. So we currently have uh, two vacant commissioner spots, District 3 and District 4. Um, we're attempting, I, I, I believe the city clerk is currently accepting applications and the intent is to fill one slot immediately, which would be the District 3 slot. Um, unfortunately, the District 4 Council person was Marty Richmond, who passed away. So there's really nobody there to appoint the District 4 person till after the election. So our intention is to collect applications now, and then we will hold uh, the, the remaining applications after the District 3 position gets filled um, for the District 4 victorious candidate who gets seated and the first meeting in December to, to review. And if they like somebody, they can go ahead and appoint them at that time, or they can go ahead and decide that they wanna go back out for another round of applications. Thank you. Uh, item number E, hangar rents. So um, I, I'm not entirely sure what the plan is on this, I need to caution all of you. Um, because I was involved in other things, I did not have time to have a conversation with the city attorney about your legal status and where the line is on what you can discuss. Because every one of you are conflicted on airport rents because you all are tenants. Um, so you have a financial benefit to this discussion if something comes out of it that benefits you. So you gotta be, we could, we, I think we could talk at the 50,000 foot level, 
we can't take any action, I guarantee you that. And then I need to talk to the city attorney and see what his comfort is. You are an advisory, in an advisory position, so that may grant you additional latitudes than you would have if you were, say, a member of the city council. But you all do have a financial conflict on this item. I think as long as we're doing this in a public forum, no, none of these conversations are being done in, in private, uh, and they're on the record as far as that goes, I, I think, and we've established that everybody has a responsibility, but we still have a fiduciary responsibility as members of the council to, to ask questions on behalf of the populace at the airport. And I think, you know, I, I know that there's been a number of times we've talked about CPI, and I think what we're trying to do is just come up with, with a, a comfort or a justification for the existing pricing structure as it is. And I think that just benefits all of the tenants. It's not specific to anyone here. Nobody's asking for a, a specific lenience on, on rent, but I think we do want to know what 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 latitude there is as far as the the rent calculations when we look at comparisons to some of the other facilities uh, in the area. Okay. So how do we want to do this? Do you want to ask questions? And I'll answer them, or I'm not. Uh, can I open with just a couple of comments? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it always seemed to me that every time we looked at the airport rents, that they would not be comparing uh, apple to apple type situation, all right? For example, a house in Morgan Hill costs more than a house in Gilroy, and a house in Gilroy costs more than a house in Hollister. So the further you get away from the Bay Area, whatever direction you go, prices come down. And so a lot of us have friends over in Salinas so we look at these guys and they got really nice hangers and they're paying $200 a month, right? So I actually, I, I talked to the airport manager, new, I guess the new manager there, and uh, kind of a conflict of interest because he says, you know, I, I have an airplane, I'm paying hanger rent, I don't want to see my rent go up, but I got to raise rents, all right? So he's looking and he wants to look at Hollister because he likes our rent structure versus if he goes and looks at Watsonville or go to King City, <laughs> Paso Robles. So he's, he's wanting to go push northward for his, you know, for his argument to raise rents. And so what I did is I'm just kind of comparing. And so the, the numbers I have here, I got from the airport managers. I can document them and stuff like that. But for tonight, I didn't go into that detail. But just comparing, uh, it's like Salinas with our east side hangers, uh, they're 170, 200. Watsonville, they're like 266. And I picked Livermore because it's kind of like we are, that's outlying from the Bay Area. You know, it's not Reed Hill View, but it's, you know, and we're not San Martin. And they're 277. And then my place that I spent a long time, a lot of time at, and I actually have a permanent tie down there is Napa. Uh, there's not a single aircraft on the ramp. Same thing in Salinas. There's hardly any airplanes on the ramp. Everybody's in hangars. Uh, so Napa, you go out there and there's that, that airport is filled with G5s and, and Citations and King Airs and Platuses and you name it. And they're 263. And I think they're same thing. They're an outline out of the Bay Area. All these, I think that's what all these airports have in common. So I'm looking at what we're paying is, I think, a lot higher than what comparable rents should be. And then we have that, uh, that tax levy at the end of the year, um, personal property tax, I guess it is, for, on, the, on the hangar itself. And I don't see anybody else doing that. So those, those are the issues I'm looking at. Uh, obviously, you could look at it from uh, what, the, what the market will bear and the market's bearing it, you know. And if you look at who's at the airport, it, you know, it's Hollister people compared to how many are out of town people, you know, because they're looking at rents from a higher area, so they come down here for that exact reason. It's a little bit more affordable or it's available, or, you know, take your pick. But we had the same problem when they built the new hangars out there. Um, the airport manager wanted to provide a certain 
rent level that was higher than the old hangars, and he couldn't rent them. Uh, so what he wound up doing is he wound up bringing the lower rents, the east side up and the west side down, and then we started there and worked on up. So I, I think uh, there is a thing in the, the Federal Aviation um, in regards to airports, and it says, you know, you will not price things out of line uh, for the people that are consumers at the airport. You know, in other words, you can't just arbitrarily raise rent to a certain level because you can, because we are, uh, you know, it's a captive audience. So I mean, that's that's my point on it. And I, you know, I, my recommendation is we, we roll the rents back and <laughs> give everybody a refund. But maybe can't we, do that. Maybe I we can, know you can't do that. <laughs> maybe we can <laughs> meet some. Maybe term. we can maybe back down a little bit. And so let me let me talk about a few things. Okay. So the possessory interest tax is a county tax. We have nothing to do with that. So that's levied by San Benito County. It's a property tax. Though. Levied by San Benito County, not the city of Hollister. And it is their interpretation of the law that if you use a government facility, you need to pay. Normally, a government owned facility is exempt from property taxes. But if the if a private entity is leasing that public facility, this is how it was explained to me, um, they are receiving a benefit of that and as such they need to pay the taxes on it as if it was a private piece of property. So any more in-depth discussions, I have to refer you over to the assessor's office because okay. I am not a tax assessor and, and I don't get that. Um, the Rents of the tea hangers have never been adjusted in the entire 12 years I've been at the airport other than CPI. So those rents were set prior to me. I do not know how that figure was arrived at. I can tell you that it is based on a square footage and all the hangers, the, we, we, there are three different types of hangers there and we refer to them as the new hangers which are 20 years old on the west side of the airport right the keenan hangers which were is kind of danny martin and a couple rows over there they all those hangers are start with a k and then we refer to the old hangers which i think were the first group of hangers ever built in the 70s correct yeah. 55 55 oh. oops sorry cow fire we found plans for 74, so we thought it was 74. So uh, the square footage charge on each of those T-hangers is the same. Those T-hangers have different square footages, so there's a little bit of variance right, in, the, in the rents themselves. Um, that was set prior to my arrival. Luckily, the finances of the airport have been so that we have not had to raise those in 12 years. I do not foresee needing to raise those anytime soon. Yeah. But as far as comparing things, I want you to be careful about your comparisons. Hollister is not Watsonville. If you want to, we have different weather than Watsonville. Yeah, but San Juan's not Santa Cruz. Correct. And, and we have different facilities yes. than, than Watsonville. Um, I think a better look at our, the prices we charge is, do we have, what is our vacancy rate? What is our um, waiting list look like? We're full, folks. Um, mm -hmm. We've always been full. We got a little close during the, the, the crash where a hangar would be open maybe for a month. Um, but we are now back to about a 12 person hang, uh, uh, waiting list on every hangar. And those are real people that want hangers. So I think our, our charge is probably where it should be. I do know a little bit about Salinas and I know that they have some real strange ways that the hangers were, rents were determined over there over the years. And I think it was whatever it needed to be charged when it was built at that time. And then I don't think it really was adjusted after that fact, which is, I think, what he's trying to take care of and clean that all up. I think they have like 15 different 
uh, rates for different yeah. hangers over there. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, the different door heights and everything. So, what the CPI does is it protects our value of the money. And I, I will argue that CPI is hugely important for the airport. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, um, but it does protect that dollar amount. And I would argue that the CPI increases have preserved the, low, the hangar rents where they are, where we have not had to adjust the T hangar rents over the years. I can tell you that the large hangar rents have adjusted over the years because of market conditions um, and they are much higher. But we've always managed not to need to touch the T hangar rents. And then the other thing I would ask you to look at is the budget. We do not generate a huge surplus each year with our budget. We, we, we generate a bit of a surplus. Do you know what our, what our gross income is? I don't really see it. Our on... gross income is about one to 1.1 million. And our expenses are between 900 and 950. Yeah. So we generate a little bit of surplus, and I do that intentionally because I was able to get the city council to set up four savings accounts for the airport. There's a savings account that each year we transfer twice the minimum mandatory for our federal grant into. So we qualify for $150,000 federal grant every year automatically. But to receive that grant, we need to have $15,000 matching fund each year. So I always budget for $30,000 to go into that matching fund account. So we always have our money for our mat, uh, mandatory grant. There's a fund for replacement of capital equipment, trucks, uh, tractors. Those are all expensive things. Luckily, I've managed to uh, do a little wheel and deal in between departments and we, we don't have it we probably will go a long time before we need to replace the tractor. Um, that tractor is a quarter million dollar piece of equipment. Um, and before we had that tractor, quite literally when spring, it, it started raining long enough for the ground to, to harden up, I would say bye to the maintenance person and they would be on a riding lawnmower for the entire summer and I would not see them again until it started raining and the place never kept up being mowed. So the tractor's really been able to, to allow us to increase the maintenance level of the airport. There's a fund for uh, building uh, repair, um, roofs, major equipment, building repairs. A little bit of money gets put in there each year and reserved, protected, so that we conduct those repairs. And then the final one is new buildings so we have some money eventually to be able to go out and buy a new hangar and put up a row of hangers or or do that sort of thing the unfortunate thing was as a result of the federal regulations on grants and the chaper chapin situation that wiped all that out so we're back at zero again actually we're a little under zero but we're battling our way up so by the end of this year we'll be back at zero and then we'll, we'll start putting the money there. So I really don't think we have a huge surplus of rent cushion to roll anything back without starting to have to look at cutting back on the services we're able to provide um, and the maintenance level we're able to provide out there at the airport. I have a question. Yes. One of the things that you had mentioned in the previous meeting when it came to the budget, and specifically we this topic has come up, was around the reimbursement for the legal fees associated with the lawsuit. I guess I think we should put this on the agenda probably for another time, but I think we'd like to understand also why we're out of pocket if we were the winners in that lawsuit, why we didn't get that money repaid uh, as a result of the lawsuit. Well, there were no winners in that situation. I agree with you. We can't agendize it for a future meeting. I just spoke to the FAA about this two weeks ago and they are not going to reimburse the legal fees. According to them, the federal law prevents 
mm. us from, it requires us to expend it, but they are prohibited for reimbursing it. So the money's gone. The money's gone. How do you recommend that we uh, breach the hangar rent issue uh, in any depth from this point on? Explain more about what you well, wish to th do. Well, today's just general discussions, but it, you yes. know, if we want to, you know, if we uh, wanted to take it to a next level of actually seeing if we, if a rent reduction is reasonable and in line, how would we approach that? So I need to talk to the city attorney and find out where the line is on what you're allowed to do. And then I would need a specific list of what you, uh, you wish to consider to make that decision so that I can produce the data. All right, so you, you're gonna talk to the attorney? I, I, I think at that point I would okay. need to. Can anybody hear me? Yes, Fred. Oh, am I on the air now? You are. Yes. I'm having trouble with unmuting. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. We hear you. We hear you. Uh, the, the one problem that I have with the CPI versus the hangar rents is uh, every year the hangar rents, the percentage of increase is compounded, which makes the rent adjustment each year go up more and more. And uh, I, I don't know if that's legal way to do it. Maybe the CPI should be based on a baseline. So, any comment on that? No, you're you're correct on that. So it's like a compound interest where you're adding the CPI to each time to the amount it already went up the year before. I could discuss that with the finance director. I could discuss that with the finance director. Okay. All right. Uh, next item F is in Frank old structure building. So we have uh, a lot of old structures out there at the airport. Um, some of them are in use. Some of those are um, effectively condemned um, for many reasons. Um, so once again, I need a little more specific so I can answer and give you the information you're looking for. Well, I. I know if that was my property and I had these old buildings on it, the city would be after me to get them removed. Uh, they're not, you know, it's, they're not historical. They're just bad old looking barracks and stuff like that. And I just thought it would, uh, at some point, obviously somebody would be building in there, but it's just, why not get rid of them? So the, the building, the main building next to the restaurant, the biggest, I saw the bunch yes. um, is absolutely full. And I do mean full of asbestos oh, yeah. and lead paint. Oh, yeah. The cost of abatement on that will be at least a million, if not several millions of dollars to clean that up. Uh, the airport, quite frankly, does not have the money to, to do that. Does the FAA have? The FAA mm -hmm. will not fund that as part of the AIP, and mm -hmm. the military will not fund that as any. I'm hoping for a brown field program from the military, but I think we missed all that. All that stuff happened in the 70s and 80s. Can we just do it in the middle of the night and get rid of it? <laughs> I, I can't tell you the fire department. I, I've had conversations with them about how uh, structure defense instead of active yes. firefighting yeah. on it. Um, but anyway. Um, Quite frankly, we, we literally cannot afford to tear, them down. tear it down. Yeah, I kind of thought that might be the issue. 
I mean, uh, that is that building had the steam plant for the entire base in it, and you can imagine the amount of asbestos yeah. <coughs> in that section alone. <coughs> See, I'm getting all choked up thinking about yeah. going into that room again. Okay. What did uh, what they do over there at Fort Ord? What, what they think they paid a million bucks a billion to knock those things down? Um, I do believe the, the as part of the closure negotiation, the military was required to pay the the fees to do that. Yeah. And I think that not all of them are down yet. Um, and how many years has it been since it's closed? So yeah, yeah. they do pay those fees to yeah. to do that. Um, I could tell you that the lead paint abatement on the building that I'm in was $250,000 and that was just the exterior yeah. of the building. Well, I, I could tell you stories about that. These guys are all masked up, working like crazy, break for lunch, take their masks off, lean against the building, eat their lunch. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. Is there any hazard to having those buildings there? I mean they're containing this so the uh, the outside has been painted with latex paint uh, obviously it's chipping off in places if somebody was over there eating the paint it'd be an issue um, I mean physically picking paint off the building and eating it um, and then the 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 staff is, are the only people that access that building and they have to be trained and appropriate PPE to access that building Where's that Hollister arsonist when you need him? <laughs> I think they, they uh, arrested him. They get him? Good. All right. I can tell you that the asbestos and lead paint cleanup on building 25 was $1,500 after it burned. Yeah. It's a big difference. And building 25 was about that big, wasn't it? Yeah. So all paving is going to be done shortly then, huh? I'm sorry? All the paving is going to be done shortly. All the paving should be done. We need, we, well, there's four more days of paving. So whether they happen this week or. OK, great. There's a total of four days of paving. Yep. All right, next item G, EDC Airport Committee. So the Economic Development Corporation has formed a airport committee. I'm a member of it. Councilperson Lenore is a member of it, and um, it, there's a lot of uh, business leaders in the community that are also members of it. There's a, a representative from Granite Rock, um, et cetera. Um, we've met, uh, they've established a work plan um, to uh, uh, work through promoting the airport. Um, advertising is a big, uh, big component of that plan, and we'll be getting into that here in the coming months. Um, another thing that is a priority, and it's always been a priority for me, and it's a priority for them, is the classification of our airport. Um, I don't know if I've gone over this with you folks in the past. Do you all realize we're a local airport in the eyes of the FAA? Or is this news to you? Versus a community? versus a regional. Okay. Uh, Salinas and Watsonville are regional airports. Mm -hmm. You you know this. It's local, yeah. And and I've talked about why we're only a local. But no, I haven't heard that before. Okay, so um, the FAA established a classification of the general aviation airports in the NIPIUS plan, which is a national airport. Um, civil defense plan, which is the plan that gives us the federal dollars through the grants. And they classified airports into four categories. Um, reliever, which is your major GA who's helping out doing um, commercial traffic. So Monterey is a reliever because it relieves traffic from San Jose. Um, there's regional, which is your big airport that's got over 100 based aircraft and some other parameters, which we'll get into in a second. Um, Salinas, Watsonville, 
um, Reed Hillview, they're all um, uh, regional airports. And then there's local airports, which have to have at least 10 based aircraft. And that's pretty much the only qualifier you need. Um, and then there's, after all that, they decided there was, they still had to create a new classification that was unclassifiable. So <laughs> there was about 250 airports in the system that were unclassifiable. So when they did this, they promised that funding would never be attached to this. Well, about four years ago, they went through and defunded all the unclassifiable airports. So they no longer qualify for federal grants, which put us at the bottom of the pile, which concerns me greatly because I, I know there's constant pressure from the major airports to eliminate all federal funding to GA airports and to grab that money for your SFOs, your Oaklands, and your San Jose's. And that happens on a regular basis. And there's a lot of politics involved with certain committees where a lot of air transport um, board members get placed on these committees and not much representation for GA. So this is a, a very large concern. So I couldn't figure out why we were just a local airport because we have hundreds of based aircraft and we have we're extremely busy and we have major facilities, you know, a mile and a half runway, et cetera. So um, did some reading, research, and they actually tell you how they figured out, how they classified. Um, they looked at an airport in Florida and they looked at some on the East Coast and they looked at some in the Midwest. Um, and based on like six different airports, they came up with a classification system to determine who's which. They didn't look at any airports in California. And one of the parameters is there has to be 100, or I'm sorry, 1,000 IFR flights a year, flight plans filed a year out of that airport. Well, the, the problem that I see is that we're being penalized for having great weather. It's easy for Watsonville to get 1,000 IFR flights a year, and um, if they want to fly there, right. <laughs> actually, if you want to drive your hangar, oftentimes you need to file an IFR flight plan. Yeah. They're so socked in. Um, we only have three IFR days a year at Hollister. Nah. So, well, Dean did <laughs> ran the numbers. I trusted him. So I went ahead, and I've been trying to get the FAA to recognize the fact that we're being penalized for having good weather. Our number's 600, by the way. We had 600 IFR flights last year. Um, and so I, I was trying to get them to have some sort of an appeal process. And they've been resisting, resisting, resisting. So that's one of the priorities of this, is to get us reclassified to a regional airport. I was finally able to make contact with somebody at headquarters very recently and explain to them my situation and I also explain to them I'm not trying to get you to just reclassify Hollister. I'm trying to make this a fair process where we can ask to be and give you some parameters and be reclassified since your formula has a has an issue with it. And their response was, we don't have any way of counting VFR flights, and that's what we're doing, because it's too hard. So um, I'm currently working with the uh, county RMI director. He used to be the uh, airport manager for Stockton Airport. Let's see if he has any ideas on where to go from here, but it's possible that we may go political um, at this point, uh, because uh, I'm sorry, Hollister is not a local airport or a regional airport. Talk to the nine counties that have been burning for the last eight days yeah. that we've been servicing. The 500 flights, the 600,000 gallons of retardant yeah. that we spread over those nine so, counties. So now we're back to my hangar rent oh. argument that uh, we, we charge more than the regional airports. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you want to pay their rent and go sit in the fog over there, it's good for the skin. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. if I had
hadn't sold my beach house, I would, but. Uh, <laughs> item number eight, old business. None. None? Okay. New business? None. Number nine. I, oh. Or number 10 when you get there, hang on. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> number 10, items for next agenda. Somehow we, we left off the update on traffic pattern altitude change. I don't know, it, I'm just curious, did we ever get that resolved? And no, we can put it back on the list for next time, I guess. It is not an FAA priority. Uh, can I, can we do the uh, a little more disc uh, budget discussion next meeting? Okay. And anything specific or? I general education on my part, but I got some items I just want to, you know, more detail on to, so I can, just an example might be uh, operating, operating supplies, stuff like that. What, you know, what makes up those breakdowns? I can send you a list if you want. Tools, gloves, PPE, toilet paper, towels. Right, back to toilet paper again. We can do that. <laughs> Do you know how expensive toilet paper got there for a while? Yeah. Proud to say the airport never ran out. Yeah, but I'll, if we can put it on next agenda, I'll just kind of you know, take everybody's time tonight. So. Well, you can send me an email at a time and ask, All right. I can show up okay. prepared with specifics. All right. appreciate that. And could we also add to the list, I, I'd like to get a rundown on what the other hangar construction project seems to have stopped six months ago I'm curious, there's a fence that's still up on the ramp and I'm just wondering when when will that be resolved? And I'd like if we could get a, an update on that project. Okay. And then items A through E would, I assume stay on the, from the next agenda. Okay. Number 11, uh, action item? None. All right. Next meeting is scheduled for September 23rd. That is correct. And the uh, following is October 28th. Maybe. Maybe. The calendar's not flipped. I can't. <laughs> Too far down. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.